Hey everybody, welcome back to Into the Timber Outdoors. On this week's episode, we're gonna be doing a gear review. The gear that I have in front of me today is the gear that I've been using for the last couple of seasons and found to work best for me. So let's dive right in. We're gonna be first starting off with boots. The first boot that I've been running during late season and first spring season when it's nice and dry out are Keen. These are just a waterproof hiker. I found these to work really good. They're fairly cheap for the price. They're nice and light. They keep your feet nice and dry. They also work really good with my Yukon Gators, so I can't really go wrong with these boots. I'm liking these hiking boots quite a bit. If I move into my late season or cold weather boot, I've been running these Irish Settlers for about nine seasons. Um, I really like these boots. Probably the one of the best boots out there. They're the Elk Trackers. They're a 600 gram insulate boot. I find these to work from anywhere from below zero to probably in the 30s. If you get anything above that, they're getting a little bit too warm. I do like that they're a full grain leather all the way up. So unless you go over the top of this boot with water, you're really not gonna get wet. Next thing we're gonna dive right into are pants. Um, the pants that I like to be running most of the time during the seasons are these Kui Attack pants. I find these Kui Attack pants have been really Really a nice pair of pants. They got nice fit. They got nice finish. Um, I also like the fact that they do have side zips on both sides to be able to let some air into there, which is necessary if you're me. I'm a little bit average, a little bit different than the average person. I run a lot hotter than most. I do not wear thermals. Um, even if it's below zero, I will not wear thermals. I just sweat profusely. If it's pretty warm out, like uh, late spring bear or archery season, I've been running these Wrangler all-terrain gear pants. They've been a great pant. I do also like the fit and finish. Um, they're about 30 bucks, so you can't really go wrong with the price. They seem to be pretty durable. I haven't put a hole in a pair of them yet. This will be, I think, my second season or third season on these pants. I also do like that they are a little bit slimmer to the leg, so you're able to tuck the bottom of your pants into the top of your boots so you don't get ticks during tick season. Next, we're gonna move over into shirts. Um, I don't usually worry about shirts too much, so I just got a couple of Kui shirts. The one I'm wearing, I got a Vias Camo shirt, Kui Nation shirt, um, just a regular cotton shirt. It's fine for me when I'm out into the field. Most of the time, I'm just wearing a T-shirt anyway. Uh, if I'm gonna wear some type of a long sleeve. I've been wearing this Mountain Ops Battleground Merino hoodie. I got two colors, black and green. This has been an awesome hoodie. I think everybody should get one. They do work pretty well in the sun. Help you from not getting sunburnt. So I usually am wearing one of these every time that I go out into the field. It's nice little extra to have into your pack. Keeps me plenty warm enough, <clears throat> even on the cold days. I'll wear a t-shirt if it's zero degrees I'll wear a t-shirt one of these and then just a sweatshirt or my other Kui super down ultra jacket that I have now when we get into rain pants here I've switched off a of Kui and I've gone to Cryptek this is my Cryptek Colorado jacket and pant system really liking this system um, it's really kept me dry in a lot of different rain downpours so I really like it. It's got a chest pocket, arm pockets, side zips, so it's able to keep you nice and ventilated when you're sitting there and it's nice and warm out. So don't like to get all that moisture inside of your pants or jacket. And that's pretty much what I run for clothing pretty much throughout the whole year. I'll only run usually these attack pants, a sweatshirt, a cotton shirt, and I'm usually good to go for anywhere from zero to 60 degrees, which most of the time here, it's usually around 38 in the, in the winter time. So next thing we're gonna be moving on to, we'll go ahead and move into the weapon system and get some of this stuff off this table. So the weapon system that I have been using for the last about five years is a Savage Axis chambered in 30 out six. Um, I really like this rifle, it's short, Stout, shoots really well, also has the Accu trigger. Um, comes with a detachable box magazine of four, really like that. Um, able to get extra mags if you need them. I do have a Harris bipod on here, running six to nine inch. I got it topped with a 
Vortex Razor LHT 3x15x42 with Vortex Pro rings. Um, this rifle setup comes in right at 9 pounds with a full mag of rounds in it. Really can't beat it. I shoot this thing all the way out to 600 yards. It shoots dead on. Love this rifle. For about the whole rifle system together with this scope, you're looking about 1300 bucks. so really you can't go wrong. Next thing we'll go into, we'll dive into my bag. The bag that I've been running here for the last three years is a Mystery Ranch Metcalf. This is a 4,300 cubic square inch bag. It weighs around six pounds when it's dry. Currently, I have all my gear in it. If I have all my gear, my bino harness, and also my ice cleats here, I am running right at 30 pounds. That's including my camera, 4K camera, and the tripod that it is currently sitting on. So we'll dive right in. So on the side of my bag, I have a Hydrofast Ultra Light bottle. Really liking that. It's really ultra light. Seems to be pretty nice, durable. On the top of my bag, first thing in is I have a Kui Ultra Down super ultra down jacket, hooded jacket. This is probably one of the best pieces of gear that I carry in my bag. Um, it's super lightweight, I think it weighs around eight ounces. I think anybody out there that's doing some backpack hunting and is looking to have a nice warm layer inside their backpack, um, you can't go wrong with this super down ultra from Kui. Any of the Kui stuff is top of the line, as you know. Um, next thing in here, Kind of going off the Kui brand, so I got some Under Armour gloves. I just picked these gloves up when I was working on the road. Got them for about 10 bucks, it can't go wrong. They keep my hands warm, keep my hands dry. I'd like to get a pair of the Kui Super All Down Ultra, Super Down Ultra mitts. One of my next things to get. Next thing in my backpack is my Vortex Spotting Scope. This is a 16 by 48 by 65 straight Vortex Diamondback HD spotting scope. Um, really like the spotting scope. It's good out to a couple of miles. It's not going to be as good as the Razors or the Vortexes or Skoroski, of course, but for about 400 bucks, you really can't beat the price. Next big thing that I keep in my bag is my gators. So I got a set of Kui Yukon gators. Love these gators. I uh, did put a Small rip them in the first year that I had them out. I did catch a horn when lifting it into the truck. Put the slice right up. Uh, I was able to patch them. They've been great ever since. And then the next big thing I can see in my bag is my guide lid. So this backpack does come with a guide lid. Um, and it's usually just what I keep all my in, my personal stuff inside my bag so it's all organized. If I have to leave really fast, I just grab this guide lid. It's got everything in it. So we'll open up one side here. First thing in is just a medical type patch kit. Um, I got some stormproof, waterproof matches in there, ace banded, bandage, lighter, extra matches, extra batteries, Benadryl, just kind of a possible thing that might something might come up. Got a little small roll of duct tape just in case something happens. And then next couple things I got some allspice makes everything nice a little seasoning for your meat out in the field. We got a little vial of extra virgin olive oil as well. And then we go into some wet ones. We all know what that's for. Also in this side of stuff is I got a mosquito head net, a Sea to Summit mosquito head net. I think they were about 13 bucks at our local REI. Uh, mosquitoes don't get too bad around here. Sometimes they can get bad in the fall season for bear. Um, if they say if the mosquitoes aren't out, the bears aren't out. So try to maybe pick up one of those. Extra lightweight, nice to have. Next thing in here is a Sea to Summit spork. Um, Great long handle spork to get inside that your cooking system while you're eating, not to burn your hand. Also, to be able to get into these long peaks of re-dehydrated food 
These are probably the best dehydrated food uh, out there on the market. Actually, it's freeze-dried food, not dehydrated food. So it's some of the best out there on the market. Next in this little pouch is my water system. So I carry a two liter platypus bag just for extra water storage. And then I use the Soro Squeeze uh, water filtration system. It's been a really good system. I find that it's lightweight. I like to clean the dirt and sediment and mud out of the water if you have to pull it out of a mud puddle unless you're like a stereo pan if you're using a stereo pan all that sediment's going to stay in there and you're just going to basically nuke the water so you're getting all the viruses and stuff out of there but you're still going to be drinking all that dirt and stuff so i choose to run the sawyer next thing is my binocular attachment for my tripod and just an extra plastic bag i was keeping extra plastic bags in my thing here because we, here in Montana we were using paper tags for the last couple of years so it was always good to put your paper tag in a bag and wrap that around the horn. On this other side of this, got my phone scope. It's more of a side that I use more often. So we got a phone scope attachment for my spot scope. The phone that I've been running is the iPhone 11 Pro. The next thing in here is my Mountain Ops battleground uh, headlamp I really like this headlamp it's going to be just like the peaks on that they just came out with it's a little different it doesn't have the red light it's probably not going to last as long but it, all in all it's been a great headlamp lightweight next one it's just my pexel tiki headlamp uh keep two in there batteries that are in this other pack over here are for this headlamp so it's been a great headlamp but also Next thing in here is my kill kit. Um, I run a pretty small kill kit, probably than most. My kill kit is pretty simple. I use just this little paring knife. Um, at work, I use these knives all the time. This one knife, I can turn about 30 bears before it really gets to the point where I don't want to use it. I'll sharpen it so much where I'll start getting a hook blade. So when I'm fleshing, I'm not going to be able to get a nice clean stroke against the hive and it'll start catching on that tip and popping little holes in the hive. Um, I just use a Rapala sharpener. This just came with a fillet knife and it'll just keep this knife extremely sharp. Like I said, it's probably a lot smaller or chintzier than most people because they're usually running a bench blade or bench made or something like that or a Havilon knife. Um, I find like this little Vixter Knox $7.99 knife on Amazon will do everything that you need. And then I also, on the other side of here, carry, got it wrapped up with some tape, a scalpel with a couple of scalpel blades. I like to run my ears, lips, eyes, and all that stuff with the scalpel. Next thing in here is black contractor bag. I like to have this just in case I need to line the inside of my bag so I can stuff it full of meat. That's how I pulled out my meat and my bear hide all at once last year. Had this thing completely stuffed to the max. Probably had about 140, 150 pounds of meat hide and gear in there. So can't go wrong. The pack did really well. No complaints here. Next thing in here, a little Woodhaven uh, grunt call. And a little elk call, nothing fancy. Next thing in here is then I got a little snack pack here. I got some Mountain Ops protein bars, got all three flavors. I carry a little bit of liquid IV hydration in there. Got a little Mountain Ops Yeti and also a Mountain Ops ammo uh, supplement, uh, meal supplement just in case, you know run out of food and you need a quick little meal we got a little meal right here next thing in here i just carry two double a batteries in this bag just for this one mountain ops headlight um or headlamp i find that one of these batteries will last all night no problem uh, i had the same battery in here for multiple multiple uses and it's still going strong so Seems to be lasting quite a bit. And the last thing I have in here are some shells. I usually carry about 10 rounds, extra rounds in my pack. The rounds that I've been using 
for the last few years are our Hornady 100 percentage precision rounds 178 grain ELDX round um, found this bullet shoots in this gun extremely well um, from 100 yards to 200 yards is usually where I have it set for my side in and it's been getting anywhere from three quarters down to about five eighths inch grouping so no complaints there for a rifle that's about $400. I mean, granted I have the $1,000 scope on it, but the $400 rifle shoots this ammo perfectly. So that's about the last thing in this guide lid. Uh, let's see, the last thing I have, or a couple other things in here, is I got a Peaks meal. So that was included into my weight. And then I also have my cooking system. We got a couple other things. I got a boar steak on the top of my pack, which I can open. So this pack also has a side zip and a top rollout opening. So if you had to fill all that up with meat, it gets pretty big. Let's see. We got one. Two game bags, and this bag also came with a bunch of extra clips and buckles. Um, I keep them all in there just in case you break one, you never know. My hunting license. And that is the whole pack. I will go over the meat shelf on this pack here once we get done with this cooking system. Go ahead and move that water bottle over. So the cooking system that I chose is the Stanley cooking system. Um, a lot of people use the Jet Boil. I find that the Jet Boil is a little overrated. It's ex extremely expensive. Also, the Steeler Stanley cooking system cost me thirteen dollars and fifty cents on Amazon, so you really can't go wrong with the price. And it is just basically like a jet boil. Um, I also do like this, that it's stainless steel, so I can put this right into a fire if necessary. It's got the lid, carry a little bit of paper towel in here to keep everything from not bouncing around. Did buy the jet boil extra wide bottom base to put onto your fuel system canister. You got more paper towels, got a little lighter. Got my jet boil fuel. And then I am currently running a BRS titanium stove. Found this stove to work really well. Had no problems with it, super lightweight. This little stove was $15.95 on Amazon. So you're talking this whole setup with the fuel, you're right around 30 bucks. So you can't really go wrong. Um, it just kind of folds out, got a little wings like that. Set it up. Pop that. Make sure your gas is off. Base is on. Extra matches. There you go. So there's your little setup. I find this $30 setup will work just as good as your jet boil. It's about the third of the cost, so really can't go wrong. Next thing that I had in the pack is a boar snake. I uh, always keep the boar snake in there. Jam something in the end of your barrel and you need to clean that boar. It's nice, just be able to pull your bolt out, run this down there, pull it right straight through, get a nice clean boar. Keep a little CLP oil on there um, just to be able to clean my boar when it goes through so it's not just dry. Get water down there if it's raining, get rusty, all that good stuff. So the next thing, big thing we'll go through here is the meat shelf on this bag. So the meat shelf on this bag I find to be extremely simple to use. Um, main thing, just loosen these top levers right here on the back of this thing. It's the pack, it's literally got a strap buckle that you unclick and then you literally just lift up all four corners make sure the sides are unbuckled boom there's your meat shelf um, 
you're able to then loosen these, unclip the bottom, and slide that meat shelf all the way out. Be able to put a quarter, hind quarter of an elk, um, whatever you need to be to put on there. Slap this back, close the sides. You do the bottom one as well. And then run these top guidelines up and then you're gonna have that nice pocket to be able to pull your meat out of. So I find this backpack's been great. Um, it's very durable. It's probably one of the durablest ones out on the market. They do have a couple videos of strength testing this. Go check it out on YouTube. One of the last things that I carry is my bino harness. Um, I have gone with the Kui bino harness. I find that this back strap fits really nice. Um, been a great pack or big, great bino harness. I do have the rangefinder pouch on the side 2.0. Um, the rangefinder that I've been using is the Vortex Ranger 1800. This has been a great rangefinder. I was able to pick it up at my local Army Navy, which is a local store here in Kalispell, Montana, which is does a power coupon, spend $100, get $50 off your next purchase. So I was able to save 50 bucks on that. The binos that I've been running are a 12 by 50 Diamondback HD. These have been great for me. I have really good vision, so I don't need uh, $2,000 pair of binos. I can usually see animals a couple miles away with just my eyes. So I figure these have been good enough with this paired with my spot and scope has been a great, great addition to my hunting stuff. So the next thing I have on here is just a little bottle of wind checker and my inReach mini. The inReach mini has been great. Um, communicator out in the back country when I got my bear down, I was able to text my wife, let her know that I got it down. Everything was good and safe. I was coming home. Great addition to the pack. For the money, can't beat it. 350 bucks. It's about $15, 20 bucks for the monthly subscription. Um, you really don't need the unlimited unless you're just on your phone all the time. When I'm out in the country, I can care less if I talk to anybody. So that's a great addition to your stuff. And then in the front of here, I just carry some like wipes for my camera, for my binoculars, all that good stuff. I do have an emergency whistle in here. Um, got a couple Allen wrenches for when I'm bow hunting. I don't have to worry about the Allen bolts and stuff on my rifle. That's one thing I do like about this Vortex scope with these Vortex rings. I've literally Last year when I was out, I literally threw that rifle about nine feet into the air to be able to get up the bank that I was in. Um, had my pack loaded with all the meat and needed my hands to get straight up and was either drop the pack or toss the rifle. So we unloaded it and we tossed the rifle. So it still shoots great. Picked it up, shoots dead on. Pro ring scope. Um, you shouldn't have to be worried about your scope being off. So with all that being said, the only other thing that I have here is a thing of bear spray. I pack it sometimes, usually if I'm bear hunting, I'm packing the rifle. I don't have a sling on my rifle for one reason, because it's always in my hands. A rifle that's on your back is pretty much useless, so I don't like to carry dead weight, so I might as well just carry it in my hands. What I like to talk and about I, is when I do get home and I do butcher stuff, uh, I use this semi-flex six inch bony knife from Victor Knox. It's been a great knife. Um, for boning meat, cutting meat. I cut meat for about 10 years. It's about the only type of knife that I use. One of these knives will last you season after season after season, cutting up all your meat at home or out in the feed. So with that being said, that should be everything that I use during my spring seasons all the way out till winter season here in Montana. So if you have any comments and questions, please put them down below and please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification when we will be posting our new spring bear season updates here. Thank you very much.